this beautiful interview. That's all right. Please carry on. Sorry. So rude. No, I just said that I much rather want to, you know, put everything on the line on the bike and then see what I had in my legs instead of, you know, playing conservative on the bike and then maybe be able to run even faster, which I don't think I could. You know, it's all about, you know, taking the moment and just racing. And I love to just, just race and then see how hard I can push for, you know, a certain amount of hours and then, you know, see where it takes me. And if you're in good enough shape, you prepared well enough, you can hurt for quite some time. Yeah. Um, and today it worked out. <laughs> Let, let's talk about coming into, uh, into T2. Uh, there was a group of you, including Annabelle Luxford, who ended up in fourth position as well. Um, and Jody and I were just saying before, the women's racing was f phenomenal. It was so entertaining from the, from the outside looking in. Um, but coming out of transition, you got the jump early with uh, okay. Annabelle, and it was Jody and Rach, and Jody, you then seemed on a bit of a mission. Within 1K, you'd bridge that gap. I got handed Rachel's shoes, which I didn't know were Rachel's. I thought they were Rinnie's, which I thought was fine because they could put them back for Rinnie, but it actually was Rachel's shoes that were pelted behind me and shouted at, that's the wrong number. So that's the delay there. And I, you know, yeah. Yeah. I knew that I had to go with Hella um, to give myself a chance of winning. Um, if I let her go, I would never have been, you know, I might not even have been on the podium because I would, you know, having someone to run with fast in the first 10k is, is very important. So, you know, I tried, I failed. Don't say you failed. No. You know what, I'm, yeah, you know what I'm like. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we do. You need to try and go with it. Like, yeah. what can you lose, you know? Just, just yeah. try and go and see how long it lasts, you know? And I, I'll you can lose $100,000. <laughs> yeah, but... I you but I wasn't physically capable. I was like, <laughs> I, I need to try, I need to work on that because... Yeah. Um, and I think you could see that you were both ITU athletes yeah. because that's pretty much, I, I guess, what the first 2K in oh, an yeah, Olympic sure. distance is like, but I'm... Um, um, I, th I think it's something I need to, uh, that was one of the lessons I took, it was really impressive to see how fast you guys went out. And, and at what stage did, um, did you drop off Jodie? I think it was like 7k yeah. or I, about that, um, but I was sitting behind her as she was taking all the wind. Um, does it make that much of a difference on, on the run? It yeah. does to me, I, I'm just, I'm so sick of being on my own all the time and I, I get it in Ironman and 70.3, I get really yeah. quite lonely in an Ironman sometimes Aww. so I I savour it and I love to race and I, in swimming and athletics it's just where I came from it's head-on head racing and, and you know what like in the past couple of years in, in long distance it's come to that with me as well yeah. as I said Camilla um, I've had head-to-head -head with Caroline in Kona um, Hella it's just it's what I love it is awesome racing. And did you um, make a conscious decision to try and kick away from Jody, or just kept your same sort of pace? Um, like I went out pretty hard, and and I could hear that Jody Britt stopped to me. I could hear her coming, and then she, <laughs> she was I'm like a herd of elephants. Yeah, and it was like I was actually thinking there should I like counter attack, attack just there, but I was saying no, this is fine. This is a good pace. And then Jody was sitting with me for for some time, and I could actually hear she was breathing quite hard, and I was trying telling myself. Oh, Okay, it's, it's, she's hurting more than you are. Just believe that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then at, at some point, um, I tried to make a little push. I don't know when it was, 6K maybe or 5K, I don't know. I pushed a little bit and then I couldn't hear her that well. And then I tried to sustain that pace for a little while and then, yeah, and then people were just saying, you are increasing your lead. But I didn't look back because I couldn't run any faster. I couldn't race any, any better than I did. So if I saw that somebody was behind me, I couldn't do any different. I would probably just shake me out, you know, if, yeah, I, yeah. if I saw somebody. So I just yeah. kept looking forward and then just hopefully yeah, that I was running fast enough. And, and I, I was suffering, but I, I, I felt good for the first time on a ha half marathon, actually. Yeah. So that was really, really nice. So. Cool. And when did you sort of bridge the gap to, to Jody and make the pass? Um, I think it was around um, 15k. I kind of got a sighting of Jody, and the way I race is I generally feel really good towards the end yeah. of a race, and I kind of need to readjust how I spend my energy. And I was like, once I get a sniff, I'm kind of, I was like, okay, just just zone in and I was just okay and I, I think I got one split saying because at one point the the gap was like a minute and a half so to Jody, to Jody. Wow. so um, when I heard it was down to 40 I was, 
bang was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was people like um, shooting at the wildlife out in the park. Anyway, um, so I got. I, I had. A, when I saw her, I was like, I knew I'd got the gap down a bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, you know, Jodie and I raced each other in Boulder 70.3. Oh, I was thinking about that during yeah. the race, actually, and because I watched then, that race. Um, when I caught Jodie there, I didn't make the pass. And so I was like, I have to make this. This, this has to be a convincing pass. So yeah. I was like, threw everything at it and just yeah. went and went and went and didn't look back um, for a while because I didn't want to kind of show <laughs> that this was hurting a little bit but you know by the time you're in the last 2k you kind of like you just can suck up yeah. like suck it up so yeah it was uh, but you can I think you got the shot where you know it was really close between yeah. us um, and you can see Jodie's just yeah. right behind me on the finishing shoot it was unreal um, unreal racing uh, as I said to uh, it's nice to be the passer and not the past because that's <laughs> happened a few times to me <laughs> <laughs> oh man um, all right j just quickly I just want to ask you just about the, the whole experience um, the general vibe from what I from what I tell is the way that you guys have been treated as professionals has been above and beyond anything you've ever really experienced before. Is this a game changer in triathlon? We'll start with you. I absolutely believe it is. I think that a lot of things are going to happen here in the Middle East and, and I think that us professionals can expect something something new and something more of the sport and I'm just uh, so happy to be able to be a part of that before I get too old and I'm <laughs> done racing so uh, yeah. that I can you know get a little bit of all that I'm, I'm really really excited so I think that we will see a lot of exciting things in the future. Awesome Jodie. I felt very valued here and I think all the professionals did we were staying in the same hotel an amazing hotel um, we were greeted by um, His Highness a launch there was many many activities that we all participated in because we were so thankful and um, you know I hope it's the start of a new future for professional women triathletes because we haven't always been treated like that I mean I've some of the um, provision for professional athletes is shocking and um, we weren't really we weren't really hard and I hope that we put on a good show as well and I hope that's rewarded with other events like this and but challenge Bahrain today I think raised the bar just quickly, how did you go when you actually first met the prince? Did you end up meeting him face to face? I kind of avoided it. I was so scared. I was like when I met the queen. Just, oh. I was just scared that I, I say the wrong things and do the wrong curtsy and I just act like an idiot. So I try and avoid all um, high, higher class um, social interaction. <laughs> I go for the lower classes. <laughs> Wait. Like us? Like you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. Right, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And you, Joycey? Um, Do you remember the question? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, something about being treated really well as a professional game changer. Oh yeah, it's, um, <laughs> yeah it's, it's been a great week and I think that's, um, you know, just small touches and big touches. I mean, um, I think for a start, the fact that they were so, they put so much energy into getting such a good field is, is a start and that shows that they value the race and they want to create a real race that is entertaining because you have to get that depth for it to be an entertaining entertaining race and um, then the treatment here yeah and the fact that I just love that um, his highness is he loves triathlon and it's almost like you know the Bahrainians that I met they just loved it too and it's pretty cool that you know some one person's enthusiasm for a sport has like spread throughout the, the kingdom we need a lot more rich people and yeah, <laughs> royalty yeah. into the sport. Yeah, Let's yeah. see if we can get Harry or what's his name, William. I'll have a word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a chat to old Queenie. Queen. No, I have met the Queen, but I think Rachel would be better having that word. <laughs> <laughs> you put something together and have a chat to Queenie. Uh, <laughs> no? Do it. I think Hella. Yeah, you, okay, you do it. Danish yeah, yeah, the Danish crown Danish prince. Connection. He's he's very involved. He did the Ironman Copenhagen in, oh, yeah. in like 10.30 or something like that. Yeah, that's good. That's he's solid. he's yeah. pretty cool guy and he's very much into the sport. I'll, I'll see if I can turn, turn him around. He's married to an Australian as well. He is. To a married, Tasmanian. Yeah. The very exactly. small little exactly. island at the bottom. That's where I'm from. It's true. I'm practically royal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've heard a little bit of, I don't know, rivalry or something like that. Oh, no, we we no. don't rival anyone. <laughs> okay, okay. Is it sometimes, is it some, some of the Aussies are saying you're not a part of Australia? Oh, yeah, there's that. Yeah, I've heard Don't that even one. get me started that. <laughs> <Tiny>. <laughs>
I mean, oh. they should embrace you. Do you, do you have your own flag out there? No. <laughs> Maybe. Wait, let's, I'm going to get it. Actually, I'm not, I live in Melbourne now anyway, so it doesn't... Oh. Anyway. Really independent as a Tasmanian, like the Scottish... From Australia? Tassie. T t good, Tassie. Yeah. Independent yeah. from Australia? Independent country. You could, you could represent them at the Olympics. Yeah. Oh. Is, is that saying how shit I am? No, it's saying how small Tasmania is. <laughs> Once again, we've gone <laughs> off track. Massive tangent. I am, I am going to leave it there because I'm pretty sure we've run out of um, footage, real, what do you call it, film. It's not called film anyway. <laughs> Whatever. Thank you very much. I just want to say that it was probably one of the greatest races that I've ever witnessed in, a, in female women's triathlon. Um, so thank you very much for putting on a most impressive display. Congratulations. Um, and we'll see you at the after party. For sure. See you there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>